Welcome to My Friends in the North with PR and management consultant Sarah Waddington as she interviews some of the leading lights in the north of England about their work, the economy, communications and what makes them tick. Welcome to My Friends in the North. As you all know, My Friends in the North is a 20-minute podcast series with me, astute.work owner Sarah Waddington, in which I interview some of the region's leading business figures. In light of these unprecedented times as businesses rush to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, I've decided to open up the podcast to a kind of takeover. Well, in the last episode, you heard from Helen Golightly, who's the Chief Executive of the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership, or LEP. And Helen told us all about the newly launched Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group and the five-point plan it has in place, which is to support the economy, build business resilience and get the region ready for recovery, with the longer-term goal of returning the region to pre-coronavirus levels of GDP and employment. We're sticking with that theme, and today my conversation is with Colin Bell, who's the Business Growth Director at the North East LEP. And full disclosure, the North East LEP is a client of Astute.Work. But Colin, welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. Um, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. I know that you're a man in great demand at the moment. Your role as part of the North East COVID-19 Economic Response Group is to act as lead for business continuity, which is absolutely critical at the moment. Remind us what the group has come together for. So the groups uh, primarily come together to coordinate the response um, to the, this initial, um, I suppose, shock phase of the Corona nineteen pandemic. But then to really think about the recovery. So as a as a northeast in terms of our economy, what what does that I suppose medium and longer term recovery look like? So it's bringing the partnership to together to develop the plan. But then hopefully to to, to align the, the collective, um, I suppose, and energy and action of, of people from across the North East towards, towards that plan. So it's creating a framework and then, and then really get, getting people behind that plan and all, all pulling in the same, same direction. So just to remind people, the group is made up of the North East Local Enterprise Partnership, CBI, and the North of Tyne and North East Combined Authorities. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Okay, with, with the support of industry. Okay, give us a bit of a reading of what's going on right now. It's a very challenging time for businesses. What's your take on the marketplace? Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. It is very an extremely challenging time at the moment. You know, probably the, the most challenging time with time we've had for, for the last um, hundred years. Um, that taking out the the, the world the world war. You know, of that 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 type of ma- magnitude. So, um, extremely challenging. I think the the issue be a be it from self-employed or businesses themselves, I think the main issue is cash. People that be in a in a position to keep their heads above water, to um, keep cash um, flowing, and um, and really almost buying them, but buying themselves time between now and being able to access some of the support that governments put on offer, and some of that started to flow. But the the, the big stuff, you know, so the job retention scheme and the, um, the scheme for the self-employed income support, you know, they're they're, they're the biggies. But but there's going to be a period of time before between now and when businesses and people can can access those. So, so for me, that that's the main area of challenge that, that that's presented. It's, it's it's all around you know cash and, and that phrase that cash is king has probably ne- never been um, never never been more more real than it is now. Yeah, really apt. So, talk us through the issues larger firms in the region are facing. What are these, and how is the group responding? Yeah, so again, the, the group consists of organisations such as the, the the CBI, who are obviously really well connected to the larger organisations within the within the northeast. I think the almost the, the the issues that larger firms are facing are, are supposed to same as smaller firms, which is bigger. You know, they're they're bigger in scale. They've got workforces who are probably on to put on a, a furloughed um, scheme there. Um, Linked to the job retention scheme, you know they they've seen a in, in most cases a drop in demand, and um, where there's been spikes in in demand in, in some areas, um, providing um, services or equipment to the NHS, etc. etc. There's challenges there just in terms of having a workforce because people are getting ill, having to self isolate. Um, there's also 
I, I suppose, link, link to that some wider issues around those organisations who, who are operational and the workforce being a bit uneasy about actually having to go go into work. Um, you know, they're, they're worried about spreading the disease, their families are worried ab- about that. So, you know, the, there's a wider issue that needs to be managed. So there's there. a human side to it, isn't it? It's not just the actual practicalities of putting your staff onto furlough, that's what you're doing. So that's where you perhaps, you know, you use the government grant to get 80% of salary up to 2,500 per month, if I'm, if I'm right, so that they can still get paid and you can still keep them on the on the payroll. And, um, and, and I think, and, and, and I think that, that, I mean, just just to pick up on that, that Sarah, because I think that's an area where businesses have really stepped up to the plate. Um, you know, I think that there are businesses who technically could pro- probably still be operating now, but I think that, I think primarily a lot of them have actually shut up shop. They've taken it as almost a moral obligation. People that they, that, Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's something we should really recognise about the, the way businesses have responded to, to this. You know, they have taken that, that people, people first approach. That's fantastic. So obviously you mentioned a couple of some of the options for larger companies there. So you talked about the furlough scheme and um, there's obviously a business interruption loan. And, and I know that on the Northeast Growth Hub, um, you've got a whole all those interventions that, that businesses can can access. So I do urge people to go and listen to those. You've talked about cash flow being king as it always is and the issues that um, bigger firms have being similar to smaller businesses. The self-employed obviously have a different set of challenges and the government also uh, and recently announced a raft of messages for them, including a self-employment income support scheme. Is that enough in your opinion? What, what's what been done locally? It's a vital lifeline, actually, because until Friday that wasn't on the on the table. So, so I think one thing is that that's been an issue that's been raised. We've been feeding that through, through to government and working a collectively with our reps up and up and down the country and I think the w- w- one thing it reinforces is that the government's listening and, and responding so a, a big win but there's still huge challenges w- w- within that you know provide a grant of up to two thousand five hundred pounds per month for self-employed individuals or partnerships that'll be worth up to 80 percent of their profits but the challenge is that we won't really understand how they can claim that until june so it's that time between now now and june that lag now, a three month lag without any money coming through well, well, well they have i think what one thing that's slightly different for the for the self-employed is that they're in a position where that un, unlike other other um, response mechanisms the government's introduced they're, they're in a position where they can still generate income Sure. So if they're in a position where they can provide services, be it remotely or, or in a, on a, a safe manner, they can do so and still benefit for that grant. So I think that that's, what, that's a marked difference, really. So may, maybe there's a bit more of a, an opportunity for them to weather the, the storm through that. But for most people, that's still going to be a huge, a huge challenge. So on that, I mean, you, you talked about, obviously, there are measures in place for larger companies. We've just talked about the self-employment income support scheme. Again, information about that is on the, both the government site and your Northeast Growth Hub. But there is one group, isn't it, that seem to have fallen through the gaps in terms of financial interventions, smaller limited companies. What's your advice to these business owners? To, to, it's almost a, a self-employed person who's operating through a, a limited company vehicle, that, that type of thing. Yeah, I That's mean, that... That is a challenge, um, but as you know, a lot of um, owner owner managers are remunerated in in the form of um, dividends. You know, they, they they essentially pay themselves or award themselves based on the performance of the company and its profitability and all, all those sort of things in the form of dividends. Probably paying themselves the tax free allowance through payroll, etc. Yeah, and and unfortunately, if they're they're in in that that position, then they're, they're only going to be able to furlough themselves and benefit from the job retention scheme for that the payroll element of their their salary so taking up that tax free free element but not for the um not for the for the dividend payments that, that they'll, they'll receive i guess um the one thing they do have which i know is not ideal for many people but will help them weather the next few months is the business interruption loan there is access to that M- many people say that's not ideal but actually it, it, there is that is one option available to people in that situation it is, it is absolutely, and there's a lot of focus on on that um, on that that particular scheme at the moment, making sure that it, it's going to going to do what it needs to do to um, to get the cash flow to people and businesses. And initially, that lenders were typically asking for personal guarantees. 
for the twenty percent that they would be underwriting, but they've actually waived that. So on Friday it was announced that the, well, the, the actual the, only the big four banks have announced that they will no longer ask for personal guarantees. But so that's a massive uh, step forward. It, 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 it is. It is a, a massive, a massive step step forward. But um, you know, there's st- still some some way way to go on on that one to make sure that it's actually, I suppose, effectively responding to the emergency that sure. we're. Um, that we, we find ourselves in. So I know your first priority with the group is to keep business operational. Um, how are you doing it and what other priorities do you have alongside that? It, it's probably not, not so much keeping people up, businesses operational because we recognise that some just can't physically operate. It's actually making sure that they exist in three months' time. That, that's probably the, the the immediate focus. I've already covered you know, the, the crucial factor in that's cash, You know, making sure that they've got working, working capital um, so that they can continue to exist and, and to benefit from that wider package of support that the government's um, put, put on offer. I think that there's another thing that what, where businesses can trade, you know, that, you know, let's support them to trade where they can. You know, there's still a, a, a business in online sales and there's still distribution ha- happening. So how can businesses, how can businesses benefit from from that we're also seeing where in some areas demands drop through the floor but in other areas it's really spiking so can they capitalize tap into some of those some of those opportunities so we've heard a, a lot of talk about the production of ventilators um there's been a big win in the northeast very recently around that around um, the the manufacture of um, ventilators Amazing. PPE equipment all, all the, those those sort of things so the, the, there is opportunity out there you know logistics and all those areas so we're really focused on that. So where companies can maybe diversify, they can um, put their core competencies to use elsewhere that's maybe outside of the norm. How can we almost facilitate that matchmaking? So that's one of the things I've really focused on in the growth hub at the moment, spotting those opportunities, spotting companies who have the capability and trying to match them together. That's something that, that came on stream last week and we're, we're pushing, pushing really hard. So Helen mentioned that as well and uh, it's fantastic. So not only are you kind of doing a matchmaking scheme locally, you have the call directory on the North East Growth Hub which helps match regional companies with the government challenges where they come out and say help us fix this problem, have you a business that can help do X, Y or Z. Massive, a massive job but actually hugely valuable and obviously that's paying off which is, which is great to hear. I'm going to be speaking to Michelle Rainbow about how the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group is working to keep people in employment. Obviously, a key part of that five-point plan, which was dovetails with yours, while appreciating that, like you say, um, some staff will be furloughed at the moment and, and possibly will be for the next three months. How are you working hand-in-hand hand with Michelle? So really, really closely. Well, one of the things that we're picking up in the growth of da- daily is... Um, opportunities where staff are maybe becoming made, made available but also opportunities where businesses have you know they, they need more people you know they're ringing us up and they're they're making those requests and see and, and exploring how it can help so typical areas we've got you know a spike in the need for logistics at the, at the, at the moment but then we've got people within say the Nissan um, the Nissan supply chain who suddenly find themselves with a load of dirt underutilized HGVs and, and, and drivers so actually how can we how can we put those drivers to better use and, and get to work in other areas health social care supporting the NHS all these areas are where where there's been spikes so it's almost a very similar um, situation to what I described around um, almost matching supply and demand it's uh, it's um, you know identifying where where we've got people where there's opportunities and putting something in place that's going to facilitate that that matchmaking so I think that what what you can see is that through through almost a lot of areas in, in this plan with the matchmakers, it could be the growth hub was actually matching businesses who have problems or challenges or opportunities with the support that can help them take either mitigate or take advantage of those. We're spotting areas where there's spikes in demand and, um, and competence that can fulfil that and matchmaking that. But we're all also matchmaking on that employment basis. So that's a kind of key. A key role we're playing, we're almost the glue, I suppose, you know, to a lot of these things. Sure. And how does the Northeast Business Support Provider Network fit into that? I think I think what we're doing, we're we're engaging with with um, companies primarily to understand their needs and then ca- connect them with the people and the services and the products and the organisations who can help them. And that, that's right. primar- primarily what what we're doing. It's the the Northeast Business Support ecosystem or provider network who actually provide that support. 
we um, convene all the business support providers across the northeast um, into a network. There's a provider-led um, steering group that sits on top of that on top of that network. So we work with that group to spot gaps in, in provision, identify where there's uh, we need to place greater en- emphasis, and then we we work with the providers to to inform them of that, and then work with them to help them adapt, flex their products and services so so they can fill those gaps and, and deliver the vital services to, to companies. It's pro- pro- probably one, one other area in there is that quite often providers, they access funding, so it could be from the European Union, so ERDF funding that, that can actually be quite restrictive. So we, we work with them to actually lobby for changes to that, that type of mechanism that allows them to flex and adapt and, and do the things that businesses need. And I think the, the other thing through that network, you know, we we can't deliver the, the five-point plan or our response to, to COVID in, in isolation. But it's critical that we convene the collective, I suppose, energy resources from across the northeast and align them to the delivery of that plan. So we're communicating that plan and we're helping people to understand the role they play in, in delivering that. I think that's a real, real critical role that, that we've got. Clearly that the role of the group, the economic response group, is it's definitely that leadership piece. And it's great to see such a strategic, holistic approach to it and hear how that's working out. Um, you're gathering intelligence to inform government about the measures that they should take to support business resilience and subsequent growth in the North East. How are you doing this and how can people get involved? I believe you've got a survey out on the North East Growth Hub at the moment. So, so that's the primary primary source. So we're trying to encourage all our partners to use that survey, so to push that out to their members, their, their client base, um, but also we, we, we're pushing that out through, out through the growth of directly. So that's the, the main mechanism. We're also talking to, to people, asking them to feed in where they're seeing issues. If, um, if businesses are, are struggling to access some of the schemes or the support that's on offer, we want to know, know about that. And we've got a direct line into government, so we're raising issues, questions, on a on a daily basis and um, we're, we're lobbying hard on behalf of the the businesses and the, the providers across the region so re- really advocate that people feed feeding intelligence and fill out the survey that's fantastic and i'll make sure that survey is included in the show notes as well right i'm going to end on, on an upbeat note it's always the best way to finish it's tough right now for many and i know you and the team have been working flat out to help as many people as you possibly can and uh, people have got a feel from that from from today's podcast What's your top tip for switching off at night? Go for a walk. Go for a walk. I mean, I'm quite fortunate. I live in in, in a, a little village in the countryside, so it's just wonderful at the moment. Get, I've got three kids and a wife at home with, with me, so we, we all get together. We, we go for a go for a walk, see the lambs running in the fields, so that's quite a nice way to kind of switch off and, and appreciate the, the simple things in life. Oh, it sounds good to me, Colin. Listen, it's been fantastic to talk to you about the business continuity aspect of the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group's work. Thanks for being so open with us and sharing some um, of the useful advice around what's happening and where people can go for more information. If you'd like to keep up with Colin, you can follow him on Twitter through his handle at Leap the Crowd. And for more information of what we've talked about generally, please visit the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group page on the Northeast LEP website, and that's www.nelep.co.uk. And you can find more useful information via the Northeast Growth Hub website too. But until next time, thank you, keep well, and stay home. Thank you for listening to My Friends in the North with Sarah Waddington. You can find Sarah on Twitter at Mrs. Underscore Wads or get involved with the podcast by emailing Sarah at astute.work. See you next time. Mm-hmm.